Hello, I'm Mal, and welcome to Shadowrun Chronicles Boston Lockdown. So Shadowrun Chronicles is uh, the massively multiplayer version uh, of Shadowrun on the PC, and it is produced by Cliffhanger Productions. It was kickstarted originally in July of 2012, released on April 28th of 2015. After a fairly lengthy beta process, I am recording this the second week of June of 2015. Um, so today we're going to take a look at uh, a little bit of the gameplay. I'll explain a little bit of the background for those of you not familiar with Shadowrun. Um, and then we'll sort of take it from there. Uh, I'll start with character creation just to kind of show you some of the features. We'll run around the starting hub area and then probably do the first mission or two. Um, I think the interesting thing about this is that it is a massively multiplayer game, but when you get into the missions, it's turn-based combat, which of course I'm a fan of, but not everyone is, but uh, I think it's pretty cool and it works relatively well. Um, you know, so I want to show you guys that for sure. Okay, so let's start off here. Let's create a character. We're going to do something kind of straightforward. We're going to we're going to pick our meta type. Now, Shadowrun, as the story goes, um, you have, as you can see here, troll, dwarf, human, you're like, why is there like fantasy stuff in a tech game? Well, if you take the genre, uh, the cyberpunk genre, right? So think, um, if you're not familiar with cyberpunk, think um, uh, Blade Runner or even uh, Terminator or something like that. Um, take a cyberpunk-esque setting and mix it with fantasy and you, you roughly come out with what Shadowrun is. Essentially, uh, it's set in the future and magic return to the world and people that were, I guess, you know, essentially latently actually one of these other meta types like an orc or a dwarf or elf or what have you, they returned to their actual form. It was called the awakening. And then you have this sort of interesting setting um, that I really think is pretty cool. Um, some people are turned off by the fact that there's fantasy elements in Shadowrun, but I, I think that's what makes Shadowrun Shadowrun, right? Okay, so what are we going to pick? Depending on our meta type, we have different kinds of bonuses, as you can see at the bottom. For example, like I like the troll, but people are going to have 15% more accuracy against us because it's a big target, which makes perfect sense. Um, I think I'm going to go with it anyway. So we'll get plus 5 hit points and plus 10% damage. In terms of background, now this also changes things, and I'll just kind of scroll through these. You can always pause the video and look at them in more detail if you wish. Now I'm going to go pretty straightforward with my character. Pretty much going to make uh, make him a sort of, uh, you know, shooty shooty type of guy. Let's see, what do we got here? Plus 5 crit hit, that's nice. Plus 20% chance to harvest organs. That's essentially getting yourself more loot from uh, dead bodies. It's kind of gross, but <laughs> it's a skill, harvest organs. Just to let you know what you're getting into here. Wounded Veteran's not bad. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's one in here that, yeah, makes you harder to hit. I might take X Cop. That would kind of offset this accuracy to hit me a little bit. I don't know, though. Plus 15% crit damage is pretty nice, too. I don't really want that, though, I don't think. Look at me, I'm all, like, confused. <laughs> no, we'll go with this. I'll go with X Sniper. We'll, we'll, go, we'll just be easy to hit. So hopefully we won't get completely blown away. All right, let's see. Portrait. I'm fine with this. Okay, we need some kind of a, a beard of some kind. Let's see here. What do we got going on? Oh, I like that. There we go. Now we're talking. Looking good. Let's see. Was that like a gray? Yeah. Okay, that'll work. Different horns. Yeah, that works. All right. So create. Oh. Um, what? Oh, we need a name. Right. That makes sense. All right. Well, this will be Mally. Shadow run. Noun. Any movement, action, or series of such made in carrying out plans which are illegal or quasi-legal. Year 2076, 65 years after the Awakening. 
awakening marked the beginning of the sixth world of the Mayan calendar when magic returned to the world. Boston Metroplex, United Canadian and American States, also known as UCAS. Mission briefing, Boston, 2076. The last thing you remember is an explosion. Then things went black. You can hear voice whis voices whispering in the darkness as a sharp Subject smell of disinfectant assaults your nostrils. An estimation started. Prepare cortex replacement. Cortex prepared. The command unit will be pleased. Hush, we should not discuss this. Malfunction in an estinization unit. We need to abort. The patient is regaining consciousness. Administer antiseptic manually. Let me... What are you... I'm sorry. Please, lie down. You were in an accident. Everything... No. No! Put that thing away. No, stay down, you... What are you doing? Please, stay back. Finally, I get through to you. What happened? Why are all these guys dead? Never mind. Get out of there before security catch. Where am I? An underground research facility. You were heavily sedated. You're probably feeling a little out of it. What do I do? Look for a way to open the door. All right, so start off in this underground research facility. You like our, uh, you like our little medical <laughs> gown that we're in? Pretty nice. All right, let's see. Sam and these guys. You were knocked out. Okay, let's go over here. What, what, what info we have over here? Welcome to your first log file. Logs provide backgrounds to missions or valuable hints for play. So essentially this first starting little bit here is just the tutorial to give you like movement. Um, Q and E, if you're familiar with games like XCOM, will let you move the camera around. You can also hold down the middle mouse button to be more precise with where you want it to go. Right, now. Left click on something allows you to interact. And again, once you're in a mission like this, everything is turn-based. So you'll see that there's two little white dashes, I and mean, you see one right now, but there's two little white dashes underneath your portrait it indicates your, your movement points. So we're gonna use one of those movement points, kinda just move up here. That little shield is then gonna indicate that I am in a defensive position. So we're gonna hang out right there. It's now the next turn. So we have obviously our portrait. This is our health. That's our mana pool. If we were a caster, in our case, we are not. Currently armed with a taser rifle and a tonfa, basically a, you know, club. This is to end the turn if we wish to do that, but we're not going to. We're going to head out here. Oh, hi. How you doing? So, let's see. We've got an 80% chance to hit him. Let's see if I can get a better angle there for you. Yep. You can see that. He doesn't have any defense standing out there in the open. Hopefully we can hit him. Yep, hit him for six. Good work. Now And he's down. Subject is in Watch out! They have guns! Some more guys in here. Flank them to get Yeah, flank them to get a better shot. <laughs> Jane is your essentially your tech support. She is a hacker, so she'll run the matrix for you. I don't remember. Keep moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's See? it's just again trying to teach you the basics. So we'll move over here. There we go. Nice. And shoot this guy. That's right. So it's just telling you, as you click on these things in this starting area, it's telling you about how if you flank a target, you're going to have a better chance to hit. Um, you know, you want to 
make sure that you're behind um, some cover. Obviously, it's very easy to hit my guy because that's the way I set him up. Now we need to go to the green area to escape. All right. See, that wasn't so hard. Ted out. That head of yours. Anything coming back yet? I, I think so. I was going to meet this medley. All right, so we received eight karma. So this is our experience, which we can spend to gain new skills. Now, when you leave the mission area, well, I'll let this play through and then I'll explain the hub system. Life has been tough lately. You're out of luck and low on Nguyen, and you need a job that pays. RC, a friend of yours, has put in a word with a local fixer. So you make your way to the Leather District to meet him. They used to call that neighborhood the Combat Zone. Things haven't changed much, it seems. All right, so let's see. We can spend our points that we earned in the tutorial. Um, I'm going to go with automatics. Now, the way it works is you pick a category. You can train in anything, which is kind of interesting. There's no class restrictions or what have you. You just build your character as you go. Um, or there doesn't appear to be. I'm not super experienced with this game yet, but I am pretty familiar with Shadowrun itself, so that's helped me. Let's see. Um, again, I'm going to focus basically on ranged combat. So I'm going to go with automatics. Burst fire. Fires a sequence of two rapid burst attacks at a target. A hail of bullets. This seems like a smart play for me. So I'm going to grab that. And then I'm going to go over here to body. And you can see there's all kinds of stuff that you can learn. I'll just hover over some of these. So improve strength, demolish, improve body, improve strength. Go to Mind, Hacking, Oregon Harvest, all kinds of stuff that you can choose to Rigging, which allows you to control drones, little robots that'll fight for you. That's kind of cool. I'd like to experiment with that at some point. But for right now, we're going to keep it simple. So I've trained in Burst Fire, and then I'm going to pick up probably Lock Picking. Uh, hmm. Mollish is pretty good too, though. I think I'll grab that, actually. We've got one Karma left, okay. Next, our equipment. You do start with some basic stuff. Um, which, if you're not going to use it, you might as well get rid of it, which I probably will. I'll sell off some of this stuff, like, right away. Okay, so here's our statistics. We have 19 hit points. We can walk 7 meters. We can sprint 14. We have 6 mana, which doesn't really apply to us much. We have 6 essence. Now, this is the base value for your mana pool. And your essence will go down um, as you uh, increase the amount of, say, cyberware that you uh, install into your character. So, it's a... It's a it's a pretty good balance system. If you want to add more enhancements to your character, you're welcome to, but the cost is that you're not going to be uh, as proficient at spell casting. Also affects your ability to resist spells too. So just something to bear in mind. Um, you have a couple different slots for tactical items, things like grenades. You have your primary and secondary weapons. So generally a ranged weapon and then some kind of melee or close-in weapon like a shotgun or a pistol and then you have of course your armor none of which we have at the moment okay now let's choose our basic our basic look there are a lot of different things that you can choose i'll just cycle through these so you guys can see yeah i don't think i'm actually going to use any face paint Oops. Well, maybe. I do like tribal blue or something. Oh, that looks kind of cool. <laughs> I like that, actually. All right, we'll take that. 
And then for headwear, the co there's a lot of different ones that you can go with. Again, lots of options, which is nice. Oh, hey, how you done? That looks pretty cool. <laughs> but the one I think that's cool is... Cowboy hat's pretty nice. I like the Rasta cap quite a bit. Yeah, look at that. Very cool. So I'll be rolling with the Rasta cap. So we'll equip that. And then... Let's see. Beard. I've already got my Van Dyke. I'm going to keep that. Face wear. Again, you can choose something like night vision goggles or something as simple as a cigar. Uh, I am going to go with dark rounded glasses. And then for my outfit here. Hobo hoodie, huh? I like it. <laughs> that works for me. Uh, ballistic vest underneath? Sure. And wear. Combat gloves. Ninja bracers? No, I don't think so. What do we got here? Plated gloves. Combat gloves are cool. I like that. Footwear. Jack boots. Military boots, steel tipped. Sandals? Should I do shadow running in sandals? What do you think? <laughs> uh, leather boots, cuffed boots. Um, let's. I actually those are those are fine. We'll go with those. Black jeans. There's a lot of different choices. I like that. Oh. The sunrise shorts? Oh, gotta be done. <laughs> Hopefully I can change it later if I decide to. And a pet, huh? Okay. Barkest. A personal demon. Micro Roto Drone. Oh, he wins. Yeah, there we go. What's up, Roto Drone? And his name will be Pepe. Pepe the Roto Drone. What's up, dude? Okay, so after you've customized your guy, you're then in the hub. So, in this area, you can interact with vendors. Anyone that has a tag over their head will be selling various goods. They'll also interact with you, give you some information and whatnot. Depending on what version of the game you have, you can come over here to this street dock. And... You can say, give me this arm. So we're gonna grab that. It just seemed to be an item that was available to me, so... Uh, let's go see if there's Jane. We can talk to her. Well, can we talk to her? No, she doesn't want to talk to us yet. Okay. This Smidley guy is our fixer, so he'll give us all of our contracts. We'll deal with him in just a second. I want to sell real quick, though. Let's see. So I'm going to get rid of this stuff like the spellcasting things because I'm not going to use them right now. So I don't need them. I don't need this shotgun either. I don't need this. Well, I guess I can leave it. It doesn't matter. I don't need the pistol. And I don't need the hacking or summoning equipment or the rigging equipment. Now let's head over here. There's an arms dealer right here. Let's see how much it is for the first weapon upgrade. And if nothing else, I'm going to buy some grenades because grenades are amazing. Okay, I don't have enough money to buy anything yet, but that's okay. I mean, I only went through the tutorial, so it kind of makes sense that I can't do that. Um, and she doesn't have grenades yet available. Okay. Must be level-based, then. Now, when you're in the hub... <clears throat> excuse me. When you're in the hub like this, you don't have the same kind of movement as you do when you're in the mission. So, first off, you're not restricted to turns. You can run around freely and interact with whoever you want. You also can't spend, um, you accept invitation, um, uh, 
No, sorry, handsome John. I'm I'm doing a recording here, so uh, we'll have to ignore. Um, the uh, that totally broke my chain of thought. Look at that. <laughs> I'm so easily distracted. No, no, no. Uh, what I was saying is that you can't spin the camera or anything like that in the hub, so the control sequences are are different between being in a hub area like this or being in an actual mission. Um, I, I This is the one thing, and there's a couple of little things that I, I didn't really particularly like. This is one of them. I felt like that you should be able to spin the camera around in the hub. It just felt kind of restrictive. So, like, on one hand, I have the ability to run freely, but then I can't spin the camera around, which... I, I, I just didn't like that too much. Um, but that's a that's a relatively minor thing. Um, once you've talked to Smidley and you have received a mission, you then go over to a vehicle parked in this alley, and this does change over time, but this is essentially your link to said mission. Now, there is a main storyline as well as a series of side missions that you can go on. And again, since this is massively multiplayer, Depending on the mission type, you can take multiple other people with you, up to three, um, into a mission. Now, um, as I go into a mission, I'll explain that in a little bit more detail, but let's uh, let's talk to Schmidley right now. Come here, Schmidley. Mr. Pembreton to you. Apologies, Mr. Pembreton. Our mutual acquaintance, RC, told me to get in touch with you. I'm just messing with you. Everyone around here calls me Schmidley. Just because a chummer recommended you doesn't mean you get special treatment, though. Not expecting any. RC said I might be of use to you. Did he now? Well, here's how it works. You get an advance on your first job, which I will recoup against your earnings if you're successful. I suggest you use it. And if I fail the job? Then your worries are beyond material goods. Got it. I need the dough, so... Here's your advance. Check back with me. All right, so now we've got some extra money, and since we sold off our initial stuff, we should be able to go back over here to this arms dealer and actually buy an upgrade. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. I'm gonna grab that, then tactical items. We're gonna grab a couple of frag grenades. And vacate the premises. Now, you always have to have a weapon, um, and this took me a second to catch on to, but you always have to have a weapon um, in your slot. You can't sell your last weapon. So, you need to switch first and equip it. And equip that nail board. No, oh, no, no. Sorry. Equip there. Change spots. Equip this. And we'll equip our grenades. There we go. Now, we can sell our old weapon now, since we have another, another weapon in that slot. And I can sell the blade as well. And there we go, we've got 750 bucks. Does she have any other stuff for sale? I think we might have enough for some basic armor. No, polymer coating is a thousand new yen. All right. Let's head into a mission. Did you even have a look around? If you've seen one alley, you've seen them all. It has its charms, I tell you. Now, ready for the first assignment? I'm ready. Fair enough. The task I could use your kind assistance with is of a problem-solving nature. I assume the problem is with... Spot on, my friend. An upstart gang called the Dragon Slayers has been expanding their territory in the rocks, and in the process have inconvenienced a number of upstanding citizens. And this concerns you why? Well, some of those citizens are my distributors, and trouble is bad for their business. I need a message sent to the Slayers. Back off my turf or else. Got it. Not quite the words I would have chosen, but I am sure they will get the gist of it. I'll report back when I'm done. I admire your efficiency, but not quite so fast. I want you to take an associate of mine with you. Goes by the moniker Payday. He's a consultant. A babysitter? You don't trust me to handle this? Consider it friendly support from my side in this endeavor. I usually work alone. Trust me, Payday is a very useful gentleman. 
You will come to appreciate him. You're the boss. You call the shots. Just point me to where I need to be. So we have an agreement. Please make sure you bring back my associate. I would consider this mission a failure should any mishap befall him. Oh, and I have arranged transport to the rocks. Just mention my name. You won't be disappointed. All right, so let's head out on our first mission here. So we go over to the taxi cab and then just click go to mission. And then you can see here, there's a map of the city. And this is our our current mission that we have available. Priority welcoming committee. Okay, managed to get the favor, uh, get a favor in with the local big shot, calls himself Smidley. Your assignment is an obvious task, roughing up some gangers in a market, but if you do well, it might lead to greater things. Time to prove yourself. So, two-player co-op. So, I could bring a friend in right now, um, or you can take a non-player character, you know, a computer character with you, which is what we're going to do in this case. Now, um, I am um, going to be giving away some copies of this game. Now, again, this is a video that's being released on... June of 2015. So if you're watching this at a much later date, this giveaway might have already taken place. Yeah, just throw that out there. But my intent is to give away a couple of copies of this game, and thanks to Cliffhanger Productions for providing those. Um, and if you do win a copy of the game, um, and you would like to be featured in a video with me, then there will be details for you to do that. There'll be a separate video about the Drive to 5000, uh, giveaways, um, so be looking for that. All right, now let me go ahead and add a henchman. Let's see. So we're picking one, and then that guy Payday is going to come with us also. So when you're picking someone to go with you, you can look at, you can just hover over them to look at their skills. So let's take a look here. What do we want? Wouldn't mind having somebody that had some hacking ability. That would be nice. Is there anyone available? Okay, let's take this guy, Jimmy. Yeah, that'll work. Come here, Jimmy. So I guess this is it. You've done this before, right? Sure. Sort of. I can't believe Smedley stuck me with a... I can handle myself. All right, let's get started here. See if there's any way to get rid of the uh, no. I was gonna try to get rid of the chat window altogether. All right, let's see. I can do that. Switch it to group chat. Might fix it. All right, let's see. All right, so now that we are in a mission, you can see here that we are in uh, tactical mode. So everything's gonna be turn-based. The green line indicates where we can get to with one of our moves. Again, the little white boxes here, or rectangles indicate the number of moves. Those of you that are familiar with turn-based tactical games like XCOM or Wasteland 2 are gonna be quite familiar with this system. Those of you that aren't, it's pretty easy to catch on. Anywhere in the green is where we can go to with one move. Anywhere in the white indicates where we can run to. Now, if I run over to say right here, which I'll do just to illustrate, I'm then not gonna really have any kind of uh, action to take. Let's see, before we do that though, let's go up here with this guy and grab this thing. Okay, this is just telling us about turn order. That's fine. I'm gonna dash over here into cover. Cover's pretty important for my guy because, you know, it's easy to hit me. Okay, we'll dash over here. If you have trouble hitting them, get closer. Thanks, Payday. Okay, so now we have some nasty little doggies that have come up on us. So let's see. What's the easiest way to deal with them? Well, first off, I'm kind of close and don't want to be. Hmm. Can Payday hit one of these guys? This would make my decision a little easier. There we go. Nice. Alright. And I'll move... 
over here. Gives me a flank. And another doggy down. And Jimmy here is not going to be... Not going to do super damage, but he can data spike this guy. Oh, it's immune to tech damage. Okay. There are different types of damage, so you have... You've got physical, tech, and magic. So depending on your abilities, or what weapons you're using, it can change. Let's see. Payday. Shoot this guy in the face, would you? There we go. Nice. Uh, I'm going to move a little closer, because I want this full cover point. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Now, um, so far, and I've played a few hours into it, several missions, um, I haven't had, um, <laughs> watch, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to have a problem. I haven't had any issues yet, um, in terms of getting through any mission that I've done. So, I, I don't want to say the game is too easy, because, again, I've only played a few hours into it, but it's relatively easy. I, I can say that comfortably. Alright, let's grab Payday. Move him up here. Of course, it probably helps that I have like 2,000 hours logged on um, XCOM. Yeah. That's a real number, by the way. I know it's, it's, it's you know, I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit that, but <laughs> it's, it's a true number. Okay, so let's take a look here. This indicates, this icon right here indicates that we can demolish this and go in this way. That's something else that I, I really do actually like about the game, is that um, there are alternate ways to go through things. You can, um, you know, you can hack through doors, generally speaking, or you can break into a back area. Um, you can you, you can override security systems or get them to, you know, um, to do things for you. It's pretty cool, actually. Okay. See that boarded up door? I quite Take like that. that. We can flank them. Let's see. Let's put you right here. Payday can come up, and since he has demolish skill, hey, he's got a hundred percent chance. A little gift for us too. We should pick that up. Smedley won't mind. Direct no. As long as we get the job done. Oh, we got more doggies inbound. Hello, doggy. Let's see. Should we, we probably could just, like, smack this thing. Yeah. There we go. Save our ammo. Actually, I should probably reload, come to think of it. These guys are immune to tech damage, so I'll just run him in to examine this thing. And I shoot that guy. There we go. I didn't see this dude. All right, fine. Sixty percent. Hmm. Might be better to actually shoot the dog. Yeah, and then we can have Payday take cover here. Which should give him a flank. Yeah, oh, didn't kill him, though. Alright, let's see if Jimmy can finish the job. Come here, Jimmy. Missed. Uh-oh. Not good. Not good. Remember that thing about this not being too hard? <laughs> oh! Because Payday's got to live through this. There we go. All right, come here, Payday. Let's move you. Let's we. Let's see. Let's move you back here. You still have line of sight to shoot at that guy from back here. You know what? I don't need you to have line of sight. I need you to get the heck out of there. Okay. Now, Jimmy, can you deal with this? There you go. Good job. Now, you can see that data spike not only did it do some damage, tech damage, but it also... 
Alright, let's move back. We're out of ammo. Um, it also marked him, which will make him easier for us to, to hit. And we're going to move everyone back. Yeah, you're going to go back. Load. Okay, I'm going to maneuver for a flank. What's my chance with a burst shot? Not very good. All right, we'll take a regular shot at this guy. Oh, he knows. Oh, got right. him. Nice. He's waiting for you to return to him. Would have been easier if those guys didn't have time to prepare for us. Yeah, funny how that worked out, huh? All right, so we just got to get to the marked area, but before we do that, we're going to loot this item. Come on, Jimmy. Let's go. To payday, slacker. To be Mr. Tough Guy babysitting me and you almost get yourself killed. <laughs> Alright, so let's just get to the extraction. Here we go, we got two karma as a reward. And let's go Welcome back here, back. talk to Smidley. Jolly good show you put on there. Thanks. Strange how they seem to know we were coming. Almost like someone warned them. Yes, peculiar. But you handled yourself well, I'm told. So here's the other half of the fee. Don't tell me you did not set this up. This was a test. Yeah, I wonder how they knew. Me. I might have announced to their leadership that they could expect a physical response from me. I do need to make it known I am a man of my word. And you used me as an expendable asset? I believe that is the job description of a Shadowrunner. But I was confident that... Well, I can. What now? Now I know your abilities under pressure, and you graduate from my personal Shadowrunner preschool. Come see me again if you want big boy. All right, so we received four more uh, karma and 1800 yen, so we'll claim that. And I'll just give you sort of my thoughts on Shadowrun Chronicles. I think it's an interesting game, and um, at first I was a little bit turned off over this hub area. Um, I, I just, I don't know, I, I just didn't really like, like it too much. I didn't like the way it moved around, and um, again, the not being able to shift the camera around kind of bothered me a little bit, but I got used to it. Um, and the missions themselves, of course, now, for those of you that may have watched my channel, know that I'm a pretty big um, strategy fan and I like role playing games. So, you know, you put those together, there's a good decent chance I'm going to like it, right? Uh, the the combat in the, the missions and the missions themselves um, are pretty fun. And I, you know, that far uh, outweighs the little hub areas. I mean, you don't spend much time over here anyway, so in my opinion, the hub areas need to be improved, and I don't think I'm alone in that feedback to, to Cliffhanger. Um, but inside the missions themselves, and the fact that you can play them co-op, is really, really pretty cool. Um, so I, I, I definitely can, can recommend to you that if you are a fan of Shadowrun and you want an opportunity to play co-op with your buddies, then this game is a perfect choice for you. Um, if you're a fan of, of strategy and tactical combat and you like this type of setting, this is probably a game that you want to look at as well. If you're more of a, you know, standalone, strictly want to play on your own, your own story, uh, you can still do that and do like I did and take NPCs with you on the mission, but the game might not have as much value for you as maybe some of the other Shadowrun games, but Again, it's perfectly playable as a single-player game, as I illustrated in this mission. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this look at Shadowrun Chronicles Boston Lockdown. I'm going to continue to bring you coverage of this game over the coming week, and I, uh, I hope you join me for that. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, I am Mal, and I will see you later.